Thank you, everybody, for joining. My name is Alistair Black with Equestria Daily, and this is another episode of The Horse's Mouth. Uh, today, I am joined by uh, Boulder Media's owner and director, uh, Robert Cullen. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi, everyone. Heck yeah. We're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff, and at some point, if I had to take a guess, I'd assume we might even talk about ponies. Um, before we get too deep into things, though, I have a, a tradition, uh, a standard question that I ask everybody. Uh, you haven't been around long enough to to know the the history with this question and and how uh, how bad of an interview question it is. So I'll spare you the history, but I, we we really want to know. The people are desperate to know uh, who is uh who is your favorite pony. <laughs> My favorite pony um has to be Hitch. I have to say I've kind of like I fell in love with Hitch quite early on. Um, and then then when James James Marsden came along to do the voice, it was just like. Sealed the deal. Uh, I just loved Hitch. I think he's just kind of like such an interesting character, and I think he had kind of the biggest arc in the movie, I think, as well. And he's this poor guy; he's constantly frustrated. Um, can't get his. He's always playing catch up as well. So there's something really nice. He's trying to. He's got a heart of gold, but he's trying to act a act a tough guy all the time. So um, yeah, I, th- I don't know. I think Hitch Hitch always just kind of rang through, rang true to me. He's an awesome character. He's got uh, some uh, Fluttershy and Applejack vibes from from yeah. Gen Four. Uh, yeah, that that's exciting to see. Uh, I don't think anybody was expecting that. Do you have one of those I, Hitch monthly monthly calendars uh, up on your wall? I, I don't, unfortunately. You know, I'll, I'll work on. A, I'm just I'm working on a sculpture, just a, just a, a kind of like ripped torso sculpture of Hitch, but uh, no calendar as yet. Uh, oh, you're gonna have to get on that. You can't call yourself a Hitch fan without the calendar. Um, so we have uh, a lot of people who have been coming into the fandom who are super excited to see not only the things that have came before but uh, what what's coming next and you of course uh, played a role in the My Little Pony A New Generation movie that came out at the end of uh, 2021 here right behind us uh, would you talk a little bit about your studio's involvement in that how, how that project came to be something you would do and um, what the process looked like throughout yeah, sure. Um, so Boulder uh, is an animation company based in, in Dublin, in Ireland. And uh, I started back in 2000, so it's nearly 22 years old. Uh, and we have a long history of working on mainly 2D shows like Foster Home for Imaginary Friends. And we worked on Gumball and uh, Amazing World of Gumball and Danger Mouse as well for BBC, and along with lots of other kind of stuff for, 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 for Disney. Um, and then uh, in 2016, I think it was, um, the studio was acquired by, by Hasbro. Um, so as part of that, a lot of the projects we were doing were kind of Hasbro-based uh, projects. So My Little Pony and um, The Little Pet Shop and Transformers and Equestria Girl were all projects that we were going to kind of take on as well, as long as, as well as the kind of the third party work we were, we were doing at, the, at, the, at that stage. Um, and then about a little bit into, you know, the acquisition, um, we realized it was going to, actually going to be a movie made as well. So I wasn't, initially it wasn't going to, it was got, wasn't going to be the My Little Pony movie, but it turned out to be the My Little Pony movie. Um, so, and it, it was going to be a CG movie as well. So we had never, we'd never done any CG. We'd done some, some basic kind of CG for TV work, but nothing like building a CG pipeline for a full feature film at that stage. So we kind of had to um, basically build a CG, a CG studio from scratch and go around Europe, look, look, hire the right people, look for artists, animators, technicians, the whole, the whole shebang. At the same time as well, trying to start kind of working on a story and developing that as well with, with, with Hasbro at that stage. So um, yeah, initially I went through lots of different iterations. Originally it was, originally it was going to be, Based on the uh, the generation four characters as well, or reimagining uh, reimagining of 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 those characters, um. But then it was eventually kind of decided that it was actually going to be a whole new generation, a whole new you know bunch of characters, um. So so from the outset we were involved, you know, with the art direction, we were involved in the scripts, basically everything from, from from the ground up. So it was a huge task for for the studio, particularly for a first time studio and first time feature film director with myself and Jose as well. So it was a big learning curve. So we had to kind of a lot, lot to learn and kind of, and kind of get immerse ourselves in the world of pony as well. Um, but we were very lucky. We had fantastic people working with us. And as I said earlier, we've got like a, a lot of people who worked with us were actually existing pony fans. So they were able to kind of keep us in a straight and narrow and, and make sure we were doing the right thing. And um, 
so yeah, that was that was kind of how how it kind of started. It was it wasn't planned. It was just kind of like, here you go, make a movie, <laughs> um, and then four 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 years later, we managed to kind of get it get it completed. Heck yeah! I mean, it's as you said, a lot of challenges, a lot of obstacles, but you guys overcame those, and it turned out really really awesome. Um, and uh, as I said, a lot of the community would agree with that. Uh, but now that you've displayed your competency in the matter and you guys have done such a great job, do you expect that you guys will, will be doing many uh, different 3D projects in the future, uh, more so than 2D? Or how do you feel about that? Is that something you'd be, even be interested in? No, we're still, we're still always kind of open to do both. I mean, we're currently kind of focusing mostly on 2D at the moment, kind of back on, on TV, 2D TV work as well. But it's we still have like a small CG department. Um, for any kind of hybrid shows as well so um, we're not set up to do a feature now at the moment but we did it we did it once before we can do it again so it's um never say never fair enough and i had seen when when uh looking through boulder media's uh impressive uh um uh resume they have uh, a gumball listed as you had mentioned gumball was like the mm -hmm. last cartoon of my generation before we transitioned out of well, being you know of, of of watching cartoons i guess you could say which isn't fair because I still watch tons of cartoons, but you know, sitting down in front of the TV watching Cartoon Network, um, that was my last experience. And if I understand correctly, you guys were involved in at least maybe the pilot of the show. Um, w would you explain a little bit about that? Because that's that's a super awesome show, and I think a lot of people regard that as probably one of the better ones of the 2010s. Oh, uh, Gumball! Gumball, amazing! World yes, yeah, we yeah we were involved. We did the um the first the first season. Um, so it's for first 32 ish episodes. Um, and again, that was that was uh, such a fantastic show, and it, as it just got better, it was better over the years as well. I think the writing is incredible. Um, but yeah, for, for that show, that was that was a really difficult project because it was a mixture of CG, 2D, live action backgrounds, Photoshop, every kind of medium you could kind of get into into one show. Um, so that again, that was a big learning curve for the studio, but also for everyone involved in this, because we needed to be able to produce us within the timeline, you know, and, and within the budget as well. Um, but that was fantastic. We learned so much from that in every department, from like from animation into comping, you know, that we kind of we took on to all our other shows as well. Um, but that was, was one of those. Yeah, once in a while, a show comes along that you're just kind of like. You just count your you count your lucky stars. You were involved in it because you knew it was going to be good. Because like Ben and the uh, Ben Buckley, the the, the creator, and and, and 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 Mick as well, they were just you know you can you knew it was something really different, really fresh. Um, and it was appealing to everyone. I mean, adults alike and kids alike loved it. And, and it was weird because at that stage, my kids were too young to get into it. They were probably like five. Um, and then years later i found like to go with my two kids kind of binging gumball years after we'd finished working on it like you know so it's nice to see <laughs> see your some of the work that you do is appreciated by your kids eventually at some point yeah no joke and you were right aesthetically in, in the, the mix of all of those different media it was it was quite a cool show as far as what was on on the tv for me at the time uh, yeah, uh yeah, cartoon network terrible. disney and the such it was it was unlike any of that at the time um mm -hmm. it, it had yeah quite a look to it uh, speaking nothing of the writing, voice acting, and, and, and everything else involved as well, which was incredible. Um, so you had mentioned to me a minute ago that you got your start in animation, which uh, seems to be a common trope of people who eventually end up uh, directing a lot of these projects. Um, what What is it you got your start in? Were you involved in anything outside of Boulder Media that people might be uh, familiar with? Not really. Um, I mean, pretty much when I finished college, because uh, I studied animation in, in, in Dublin, um, and for a few years, I worked, you know, work, I did some freelance work in Europe. I worked in the States shortly as well for, for a time period as well. And then kind of like by the late 90s, a lot of the animation in Ireland had dried up. There wasn't much of an industry there, um, particularly because Sullivan Bluth, which was a big studio at the time, which made The Land Before Time and American Tale, they had just closed down. So there wasn't much happening in the terms of animation in Ireland at that stage. So... Um, I ended up just kind of like doing freelancing, doing storyboarding, character design, wherever I could get my hands on just to kind of to pay, to pay the bills. Um, and then eventually I was kind of introduced to this program called Flash. This would have been 1998, 99. Um, and this is when e-cards were kind of a thing. At, you see, it was someone's birthday, you send like an animated, 10 second animated GIF almost. Um, so I kind of started looking into that and realized at that stage, a lot of people who were making the cards were programmers and weren't artists. 
Um, so I saw a little kind of a chink of an opportunity there where I could teach myself Flash and do some simple animation for cards. And that's basically how Boulder started. They've got a small contract with a, with a company in LA. Or, or two people who are still with us to this day, 20 year, 22 years ago. Um, and then after that, it, for the first couple of years, was just kind of doing online content and comedy shorts and stuff. And then our first big break was with a show called Foss's Home for Imaginary Friends with Cartoon Network. And that was Craig McCracken's follow-up to Powerpuff Girls. Um, and amazingly, we couldn't believe we got it. We landed a gig. We went, so we went from a studio of like six people to like, 35 40 people in a month and we had to learn how you produce a show with flash because <laughs> it's never been done before really at that stage um so it was kind of that was our first big break in our kind of road to in, into doing shows for nickelodeon and, and other broadcasters but um yeah before that we were just kind of like surviving hand to mouth just getting any gigs we could we could do so it's just again luck luck a lot has to do with it Heck yeah. And I mean, a Craig McCracken cartoon, that, that's a great start. That's a great way to, to kick things off, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Um, no, it was the, great. I mean, to have, like, that, 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 I mean, Powerpuss was, was, a, was a cult success already. So, and then with, with Foster, because it was so different, it was so intelligent, the writing was brilliant, it was funny, it looked amazing. So we were just lucky that, the, like, you know, we got the gig and <laughs> we kind of again we kind of learned as much as we possibly could to that to bring it on the brand ex- experience and knowledge that we gained onto the next show as well so heck yeah i, I mean uh, i could speak for probably a lot of people in here i i'm sure most of not uh, most of us if not all of us maybe with the exception of some of the kiddos have seen and were a part of uh, fosters when it came out so um that, that's yeah that's that's wonderful uh you guys have, as I mentioned before, quite a resume, quite a quite a few different things you've been a part of, maybe one or two. Uh, do you have a like a, a favorite, something you really had an affinity for, maybe during uh, your process of working on it, or even after the fact? Um, yeah, I think it always kind of have a special place in my heart. I suppose. I mean, um, Danger Mouse was was a fantastic experience, for that, which was a, we did a kind of reboot of Danger Mouse for uh, for BBC a few years ago. And that was great because up until then, we were mainly kind of service provider. So, you know, we, we would do the work for a studio. Uh, I.e. we'd mostly get storyboards over and background keys. And when we do, we would do the core, the core production. But with Danger Mouse, it was basically, we did everything from scratch, you know, from art direction, storyboards to like voice directing. So that was, that was my first experience of doing something from top to tail. Um, and that was great because I loved it. I loved Danger Mouse as a kid growing up. And we had a fantastic team. And, you know, uh, Ben Ward, who was the other showrunner, he was the head writer. Um, you know, it was just a thrill because you, you get involved in the writing and the scripting as well. And it felt, I felt, I mean, it wasn't RIP, but it felt like it was RIP because we kind of, we were all over it. And we, you know, we got our handprints on it, our fingerprints all over it. So that was great. That was just like, a place. I mean, we did like seventy. Well, I directed seventy eight episodes, and I can't even remember directing seventy eight episodes because it goes so fast. But it was so enjoyable as well. Um, that was that was super. But um, and the Pony movie as well. I mean, that was. I mean, I've never directed a feature film, but especially never did any kind of CG to this extent. So again, I mean, everything's always a learning. You always everything is always a learning curve. Like you know, you're you're bringing forward. So that was fantastic. You well like, to be involved with the writing process and. You know the designs and work with some fantastic people. Um, yeah, there's always. I think every project is always something unique about it that kind of stays with you. I'm sure. Yeah, no joke. Especially with the uh, with the the overcoming the obstacles mindset. I could only imagine there's a lot of things you could look back on and be like, that was that was wonderful. Especially uh, um, looking at at where you guys are now and, and the things that you've accomplished at this point. Um, you said, like, with Danger Mouse, you know, it kind of felt like it was your IP. You got to be a little bit more hands-on with it. Um, it it's awesome that you have uh, these projects that you work on and you put so much passion into it that uh, even if it's something that you're, you know, you're you're not that involved with, you're still able to to deliver um, with uh, some fantastic results. Uh, I, I don't think there's anything on the, on the listing for Boulder Media that I went through personally where I haven't, one, already been immediately familiar with it, with what it was you were doing on it. Um, uh, but also just blown away with with uh, with all of it, really. Uh, I'd love to yes. see these these uh, these flash cards that you're talking about these these birthday cards, yeah. these e cards. Um, it was funny. I found a few there 
a little while we had like an anniversary thing for Boulder and we found some like you know and it's yeah <laughs> your your memories are usually better than what you actually what what you did so um yeah it was good I mean it, it was it was it did what it did what I had to do at that time heck yeah I'd, I'd imagine they were a little hall, like hallmarky or like what was the no they were actually they're all a bit kind of like trying to be a bit rude a bit subversive and stuff so wow. um oh yeah yeah I don't know it was all yeah <laughs> No, I just, there's one card we did. We got into trouble. We actually ended up being on Irish radio. They were complaining about it. was a Patrick's Day card. I won't go into it, but it was a St. Patrick's Day card. And someone rang up complaining about this card. It was pretty innocent. It was, it was a, a bit rude, but that was about it. Like, you know, so, um, I don't know. It was just, you know, having some fun. Okay. So I'm going to be ran out of town if I don't ask this question. And I'm serious. The pony question, the setup for that was a little misleading because uh people love to hear about your favorite pony and it's it's whatever but seriously i might actually be uh i might be outed uh so we have a lot of content of course that we're looking forward to seeing people are really hungry for for anything g5 at the moment um uh fans have been asking me to ask you are are you do you guys plan on doing like an art book on behalf of uh has hasbro approached you about doing something like that for concept art um would you have any intention of releasing more? Because everything we've seen, as you said, wonderful artists you've worked with, we, we really want to see as much as we can. Yeah, no, we, oh gosh, we, we'd love to release an art book. I mean, we've got, we've got almost like four movies worth of artwork, concept designs there. So yeah, it'll be great because it's, it's, I mean, it looks, it's great to see it on, on, on the big screen, but you know, there's something really nice about in a book seeing pages, particularly kind of concept work as well. You could, you can kind of kind of just look at and mull over and, and, and kind of admire it because yeah, I mean the guys we were so lucky with an amazing team of artists, character designers, and and uh, concept back lo- location designers. Um, yeah, I'd love to see. I mean, there's there's there's, there's no shortage of material to fill a couple of books, to be honest. Um, and I think it'd be good for the fans as well because you can see kind of different attempts where we would kind of go certain ways, there's certain environments, even character designs. Or even kind of like some story points that were kind of explored and then we kind of binned. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot in there that, you know, that gives you an insight to, to, to the process, not just visually, but actually the story as well. So yeah, if Hasbro, if Hasbro want to make a book, we've got all the, we've got all the materials. We're happy to, um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be awesome. Good to hear. Good to hear. Uh, hopefully that, that's the case with Gen 4. They did it. Um, I think they yeah, did it yeah. a couple of times. Uh yeah. And like you said, there's there's plenty to to be delivered, and we we need it. We need it. I think we it's it's fair to say we need it. Uh, but yeah, I had to ask. Uh, the show has uh, or the movie rather the 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 2021 um, movie was uh, quite an experience. I think for all of us, it's not what we expected. CG when we heard it was going to be CG, I think everybody was uh, understandably cautious, especially these days. Um, but you guys, you guys delivered on a really awesome movie that the fandom loves to death. Um, since you have released it, have you had any interaction with fans, and and what has that experience been like? Uh, um, uh, hopefully positive. I'd imagine. No, I, I haven't actually. I suppose because of, of COVID lockdown, kind of only recently kind of lifted. Um, I haven't not really just the, the occasional kind of email and, and tweets, like you know, and I'm I'm heading to my first pony convention in august so in 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 uh, in europe so that'll be an, that'll be an experience so i'm looking forward to that um but no i have i mean i've heard, kind of heard from second hand from you know from people who kind of are full-fledged you know bronies you know and or, or other kind of like filmmakers who have seen as well who were kind of surprised of the movie i think i think like i was saying i think the movie had probably i think low expectations were in our favor and <laughs> um, to be honest so we kind of we thought, you know what, well, let's just make the movie we want We want to make. You know, what movie would we like to see? You know, whether or not you have experience or knowledge of what came before this in, in terms of the lore and stuff, that let's just make something really fun. And that everyone could, and it was entertaining as well, playful. And, you know, obviously we want to kind of have a, have a, a strong message in the movie, um, but also something that parents and kids alike could kind of dig. Okay, awesome. When when you work with a company like Hasbro, um, sometimes they they have uh, they have of course you know they're they're a business and they're trying to make money and they have certain things they'd like to fulfill. 
Uh, do you remember any specific things that they had approached you with that you had to be creative about approaching and, and implementing into the movie? Um, they were, I mean, they were brilliant. They were, they were, I mean, Hasbro and it was Emily Thompson who was one of the, who was working with us in terms of kind of like that end of things. Um, it was fantastic because it was pretty simple. We were kind of saying anything that you need in the movie, you know, whether, it, to, for, whether it's for franchises or toy, let us know really early on because then we can kind of bake it into the story in a natural way. Because the last thing you want to do is kind of like you're near the end and suddenly someone asks you to pop in, you know, some something that out of the blue so you have to kind of shoehorn when the pun you have to shoehorn that into into the script so sometimes they kind of bump when you when something that's just popped in and it feels random and usually because it was probably asked randomly later on in, in the process of writing but with um with this we kind of knew early on what 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 little boxes we want that Hasbro wanted to, uh, to be taking like you know and, and with us as well because when we were writing it we were coming up with ideas that Hasbro were happy for so for example Sonny and the roller skates that was our idea because we're thinking we needed that we needed her. We, that's the opening song and have a bit of mo- bit of momentum, a bit of kind of like motion to it. And running through the streets sounds a bit kind of she's gonna be <laughs> running and singing all the time. So uh, we had the idea of like you know putting on roller skates because then and then that gives the idea of delivering smoothie. So one thing that led to another. So when Hasbro saw the the concepts of of Sunny on like four roller skates, they're like, oh my god, this is great! Like you know because it, again it can lend itself to a toy line. But more importantly for us, it actually lends itself to the story and, and, and the character and, and, that, and, that, and, and the intention of that scene. Um, and the same with like Sonny's like lighthouse and stuff. You know, they all came from, from the story, you know, and then we, if, we need, if we need to tweak it for some for, you know, for Hasbro merchandise reasons, we could do it, but I didn't feel like, it, 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 we, we wanted to make sure it didn't feel like an hour and a half long advert. Do you know what I mean? It needed to feel like a standalone movie and that, uh, you know, if there was stuff in there that kids loved, it's because it looked cool or it, it, it was involved somehow with the characters and the story. So it was all intertwined. Um, so that was, yeah, there were, there wasn't really any, I mean, there was a lot of kind of debates at the end about the transformation and Sonny getting powers and do air ponies get powers, not get powers. Um, so it's kind of a lot of kind of that, which is more about kind of like the future of the, of the, of, of where it was going after the movie, setting up, setting up the next, the next series. Um, but I can't think of, there wasn't really anything um, that stood out. I mean, it all felt quite organic. Any requests that came into them or something that we suggested to, to the guys. So it didn't feel like we had to get in, you know, this magical moment here because we wanted to sell magical wings or whatever. Like, you know, it felt a bit more, this felt organic. It certainly came across that, but I would just, we know from our, our uh, experience with Hasbro that there was definitely, as you said, boxes they wanted ticked and, um, we were curious because in, in a lot of cases with Gen 4, they, they didn't always get that uh, that uh, uh, courtesy of, hey, uh, implement this later on. It's usually, hey, pull that out right now. And then uh, they're like, all right, how are we going to drop this into the story so abruptly? Um, and sometimes that, that can spark something creative inside of, you know, it's all in how you overcome it. And in some cases, they did a really good job. So um, in the... Uh, uh, Speaking to Atomic Cartoons, uh, you know they're now responsible for the the upcoming series. They're going to be doing the 3D animation for that. Um, would you explain a little bit for those who don't know, kind of uh, like just for future ke- questions' sake as well, your involvement in um, uh, like what what that transition is from you know you guys delivering what you have to Hasbro, your involvement in things as of now, sort of sort of what that looks like, the the state of that. Yeah, I mean, for the um, the the current the the current series that's been done on Atomic, we're not involved in that. Although they're using like it was great because we actually we could provide them with like the rigs, the characters, and the sets as well. So it comes there's a nice kind of sense of continuity there. And also, obviously, hopefully that will help help support the production as well. Um, so yeah, we're not kind of involved in in that end of things at at, at the moment. So I'm interested and I look forward to see kind of where it goes. Sure thing. You said as of right now. Do you ever expect that there would be a time that you guys would be pulled into Pony again? I mean, from what I understand, you're still you're still a part of Hasbro, right? We are, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'd like to. I mean, I, th- I think, um, yeah, just there's, there's things I like to. I, I in my head where I could see it could go as well, like you know, but it's um it's a bigger it's a big franchise and you know it has it has lots of demands as well. So um, 
Yeah, it would be great. It would be great to kind of like re- reunite ourselves with the, with the characters and because with, with, I mean, we were kind of, we were there at their birth, you know, their inception. So, I mean, they all have a really kind of special place in our hearts where everyone's worked on them. You know, we know them inside and out. We know what they looked like before and after every single kind of retake and, um, and kind of like getting to know the characters and working with the actors to kind of really evolve the characters and, and kind of, you know, make them jump off the page even more so uh but yeah but with grace so like i say i never say never never say never that's good i think everybody would be delighted to have you guys back on it so if we if we find out in the future that uh, you guys are uh i'm sure we will be ecstatic um it's it, from you know rainbow road trip to the movie it was it was an experience for all of us we got to i'd say unexpectedly go on a ride that we um ended up enjoying very much so uh, the next quick question I have is something that I, I'm sure, for the sake of everybody involved, nobody would be too interested in, in hearing a, a whole lot about it. Uh, but I, I have to ask: um, Are you very familiar with um, the uh, the current climate of Hasbro as far as the Alta approaching and and in talking about uh, uh, switching up the board of directors and the such? No, um, not really. I kind of. Got to step away from all that stuff. Not really, no. Probably, you probably know more than I, to be honest, Alistair. Okay. I was curious. I mean, as I said, as very interesting as that's going to be to the average 13 or 14-year-old that's uh, going to be popping through here, I, I was curious. Uh, there's uh, potentially the, the, the fate of Pony at stake. And, um, yeah, we're, we're, we were very curious if you were involved with, uh, or not involved, but aware of any of that. Um, let me see here. So you had mentioned conventions. Conventions are like the glue of the fandom. They're kind of a backbone for everything we do. And yes. they're an incredible experience. Have you ever been to a fan convention before? And uh, if not, uh, w- which one are you going to in Europe? No, well, no, I haven't. I haven't gone to one yet. So I'm wow. going to. It's a. Uh, it's Czechoslovakia. It's in Prague. Okay. Yep. Um. So I'm looking for. I've. I'm. They. They designed a little Q. Uh. QC. Uh. Character from myself. Um. OC character. Um. Of myself as a pony. Um. Which is lovely. So yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm just looking at this. You know. Meet 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 some fans and talk about the movie and um just kind of see Prague. Uh. Yeah. Because. Uh, obviously I've seen documentaries and you know I mean when when we were when we were making the movie you know it was on a question daily daily um just out of curiosity because to see what the rumors were and um and then when the movie came out it was great to be able to kind of see that and see it gauge the reaction as well from the fandom so um no I feel like I've kind of I've, I've immersed myself kind of in the fandom you know to a certain extent um so it'd be nice to actually kind of physically go to one of these uh, conventions and, and say hi that's I mean that that's wonderful. I think a lot like how you would uh how you would spoken to the movie, kind of maybe having some low expectations going in, and you guys were able to deliver this awesome thing that everybody loved. I have a feeling that that's probably going to be similar to your convention experience. Um, I I don't I I, I know the Brony documentaries that are out there, and uh, although none of them are terrible, uh, I, there's a lot of special stuff that they leave out that I'm sure you're going to experience once you're there, especially with the the European Brony community. There's there's some wonderful aspects, especially as uh, concerning charity and the such that uh, um, I really hope you get a you you get a chance to see uh, as much as possible. I hope I hope they don't have you too busy and you can actually explore a little bit of that because it's an interesting culture. Oh no, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. It's great. Now it's you know I've been lots of conventions before, you know, comic book conventions and stuff, and um, but this is this is I think this is probably a different level. I look forward to it. Potentially so. Uh, moving forward into the future, though, I, I think it's inevitable, especially if the series gains some traction, that uh, um, uh, you might be uh, asked from one of the uh, American conventions to come over. Um, should they should they want to bring you over? Is that something you'd be interested in doing? I I wouldn't str- I wouldn't fight. <laughs> no. Yes. Listen, I'm kind of I'm happy to go. Um, whereas fun and life and a bit of crack and um. Crack in the Irish sounds crack. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, because again, like the movie, we had so many people in the movie who kind of came from fandom, you know. So I feel like I've know I know all these conventions already. So I'm just I'm looking forward to actually kind of 
doing it in person and um yeah all right and my apologies if this has been touched on a little bit here but i'd like to ask uh have you explored the you explored fan art of course have you seen much of like the animated content the music any other sides of the uh the creative uh the creative brony group um not not for the moon not during the movie the movie process um i mean also because you need to be kind of wary you're not you're not overly influenced by other people's work as well um not really i mean it was it was it was i mean i think it was just discovering leah you know was was just a game changer for this for the project i think as well because the stuff she was doing was kind of what we were looking for because we 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 knew in our heads kind of what we wanted the movie to look like and it still needed to kind of have a call back to the original tv series with the cameras proportions and even how the characters look in profile um and she just seemed to kind of like capture that but add something really kind of lovely and, and kind of um kind of believable to, to her designs like you know so um so that that, that was probably the extent with regards to kind of like the fandom artwork um and what they were creating at that stage with regards to the movie but not in terms of like the songs or any kind of stuff we were kind of we were pretty clear in our own heads at the start where we can when it comes to the music of the, of the movie we wanted it we just we needed to make sure it was completely different than what came before um and that we wanted it kind of to be a quick eclectic you know a mixture of kind of rock and ballad and not ballad but rock and kind of like broadway or you know a bit of everything so to kind of keep keep the audience on their toes so to speak um so yeah i don't know if that answers your question <laughs> No, I'd say absolutely, uh, especially with the not wanting to be too influenced with things. I can understand that. And it's likely when you go to these conventions, you'll probably see see a couple of new things, undoubtedly. So, um, Who was it that was in charge of the music for the show? Because that was one of the biggest things, I think, for the fandom. We had a, a callback to, to the first season of My Little Pony and, and, and carrying on all of these awesome musical notes that spread throughout. Um, and that was, that was beloved by everybody. Yeah. Like um, we had two amazing songwriters, um, Anna Schmuckler and Mike Matter, um, and they were like, they were just amazing because the first song they the first song they played for us a demo was Angry Mob, um, the Angry Mob song or uh, yeah, Danger Danger was called now, um, and it was just a demo on a guitar and a piano, and it was we were, the lyrics are so spot on, so funny, really really silly, really intelligent really saying something here about the movie like you know and the tone of the movie so that was that actually that, that kind of we almost hung the movie around that song because that came in so early and it was just like that's that's the kind of movie we wanted that that kind of like silliness but it's actually trying to say something as well um and then you know they could from ballad from from kind of like more kind of broadway kind of tunes as well we were just blessed with amazing amazing songwriters and um yeah, and we had eight eight eight, eight prayers for for did the score, and he was just when he when we got him, we couldn't believe it. Um, and he just brought the whole movie to life because he, when you're when you're making a movie, you usually have a temp score track, which is ba- you basically you're just using bits of other music from existing s- scores. So and he can live with that soundtrack, that temp score for like three years, and he get really really used to it. Um, so when someone comes in with a whole new original score. It can sometimes it can be kind of jarring because your ears not used to it. So you just your brain needs to reset. But with eight or score, it was just like he was just elevated everything. It was just like it was it was funnier, it was scarier, it was more you know emotional. Um, yeah, it was it, yeah. I mean, obviously, music was played a huge part in 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 the movie, and we were just we were blessed to have some of the best people we could possibly work with. Awesome. I'm glad you guys went the route of, of including more music in, in the movie because it was, as I said, very reminiscent, very nostalgic of, of what we had in the earlier The Pony days. So, um, uh, And they're great as well. I mean, the song is a great, I mean, because they're, they're great for pushing the story as well because you know, the last thing you want to do with a song is just stop, sing a song, and then move on. As long as the song is kind of continuously moving the story, telling you something with the characters, which is what, the, what their songs did. Which was great because it felt like, like, and it was nice. Sometimes the song comes at just the right moment in terms of pacing of the movie, um. So it kind of it's a bit of light relief, but it's still kind of moving the story along and uh, revealing something more. Certainly, I I think I've probably listened to "Fit Right In" two hundred times at this point. <laughs> I really like that song. I don't know what it is about it. Um, I, there's a whole lot about it. 
Uh, do, do you have a favorite of the uh, of the movie? Um, I think Angry Mob. I, they kept changing to be honest. Angry Mob is still one of my favorites. It's, it's funny actually because a lot of the songs, Angry Mob, the original version of that is way longer. That was like there's like three verses in it, and we, and it was all and we were we were going to hold the whole length of the song, and um, we just had to cut it down just because of time length and you know cost as well. So and the same with like um with fit right in Izzy's rap. It's quite longer as well, like, you know, but we had to, again, we just had to unfortunately cut that down just to kind of like for practical reasons. Um, but I think Angry Mob, actually, I love the mob, but Angry Mob, I think, I think, I think, I think maybe it's because it's forcing I heard and it was so influential on the rest of the, of the movie. That's probably kind of has a special place. Okay. I, I guess on that end, I've got to ask where, uh, what happened to, what happened to Sprout? What's he up to these days? question i don't know um i don't know hopefully he'll really make an appearance soon um i don't know we had we had yeah we had so lots of kind of conversations about how to end sprout as well like how should he be punished should he not be punished you know so but we're thinking yeah you know he he's not a bad bad character he's just he he was led to believe certain things and you know and, but he is a bit of a moron anyway but uh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully, see a return because I love. I, we love Sprout. Sprout. I mean, because he's such a moron, and but he's kind of he's a, he's a co- co- comedic villain, which is usually kind of great to work with as well. Like you know, so um, and that was the aim, just to make all the characters likable. You know, even if they're they're like not meant to be likable. I think there's something nice about kind of like having a, having a bit of warmth to, to to the movie. Certainly, yeah. Um, and I, I had asked mostly because in a, in the most recent Tell Your Tale, um, which is the YouTube series they have that that's prepping us for the um, uh, the Make Your Mark uh, series, we have a, a scene where Sprout's face is on a wanted poster in the background. Oh, really? He hasn't been seen since. So yeah. people want to know. Trip. People want to know where he's at. We can't well, find No, uh, I want to know now. <laughs> apparently, he's on the run or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's great. Um, I, 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 as a, uh, I know we're probably getting a little close on time here. What, 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 okay. So on, um, the subject of Sonny and Izzy, uh, I've got to ask, and this is, I'm going to prep you here because you're probably going to be getting this question a lot if you haven't already. Um, a lot of people, uh, in our fandom, if you, if you don't know from Generation Four, uh, there are a, a, a lot of people who enjoy shipping characters. It's like, mm-hmm. a, it's a pastime for some bronies, I guess. Um, for whatever reason, uh, I, I don't know how they got the crazy notion. Uh, some people have been uh, shipping Izzy and Sunny together. They think that they're a really cute pair. Um, how do you feel about that sort of thing? Do you see why the fandom might have gotten that impression? Um, I know today it's uh, people make a lot of statements about um, uh, things like like LGBTQ plus and the such. And uh, in, in this case, they would be um it, it, i i wasn't sure if that was something you guys were even wanting to imply was that intentional like what what would you speak on that a little bit yeah i mean for izzy and uh sunny no that was never really i mean it's great that people can kind of like you know see make themselves what how they think because obviously these are evolving characters as well so you know it doesn't say characters don't evolve into you know the different kind of like uh personalities or different characteristics or or whatever. Um, for us, no, it was never kind of. We never kind of went there with 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 them. It was just kind of like they're more like kind of soulmates, really. Like you know that they were just both struggling with something in their own in their own personality, but in in, in their own location and environment as well. Um, so and the idea is like we always loved the idea that like it was Sunny to have found Izzy's little kind of like. Uh, I, I, it was easy that I found Sonny's little kind of uh, letter at the start because I had it just felt a really kind of a lovely little way to connect them from when they were children, like you know. So um, that was what it was. It was just a real good, a solid, you know, friend friendship, you know, based on shared shared experiences and and the same wants as well, and you know, big heartedness, and you know, both of them are really empathetic characters. So I think think that's what what people kind of probably are attracted to them by as well like you know um so there wasn't that yeah we I mean even like we hitched we made sure, we didn't want any kind of like ro- possible romance in there um because it's it's we don't know where it's going to go in, in 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 like continuing series 
So let's just introduce the world to these characters. Let, let give us time to get to know the characters for them to get to know each other. We're overcomplicating it right on the on the, kind of on the, on the outset of 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 of, of the, the movie. So um, yeah, there wasn't really kind of. But again, it's great that people can tell their own stories and you know um, relate to them as well, which is great. So that's what that's what it's all about, really, isn't it? No, absolutely. I, I was just curious because I know that Hasbro they really encourage that sort of thing. Um, like we 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 very much liked the having the up in the air thing. I I know a lot of people who, especially those who who found these ships interesting, they were, um, they were able to be like, hey, this is something I think is cool. And then uh, towards the end of of My Little Pony Generation Four, um, Hasbro came down and they they went to the directors and they're like, these characters are going to get shipped, and these specific characters are going to be with these specific characters. Okay. Um, and uh, from what I understand, they were they were pretty adamant about it. So I was I was curious because even to me, it seemed like maybe there was implied that they um, that that might be something that's explored a little bit later. Like there might have been something oh, there, maybe. or maybe Hitch and Cloak. <laughs> but um, you never know. Um, I yeah, I mean, it was for yeah. First it was and yeah, we didn't kind of go that. Which it was more about just kind of like establishing the relationship of of, of them as 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 a, as a, as a group. That's important, yeah. Especially if you're not going to be involved in like the series on a day to day basis and see those characters develop, then um, yeah. really leaving it open is, is the best thing you can do. Uh, and it might even be regardless. I mean, just as I said, having having especially with the fandom as crazy as it is, and, and having the content that we do and the things that we we attach to, um, it, it might be better off for us as well because you don't have any confirmation. Nobody gets shot down. Nobody's opinions or uh, feelings get uh, get targeted yeah. in that sense. So. And you'd say they, these things are kind of they're ongoing. They're always they're you know they're written, you know. See what I mean? So no one's ever set in stone as well. So it's um, oh, it's which is great. It's nice to be able to do that as well. That you can surprise the audience as well if there's a, a change in, the, in terms of that. Heck yeah. Um, let's see here. I think we got time maybe for a couple more questions if that's all right with you. And I don't think we have anything in the Q and A yet. I know we have some people that are are monitoring, but I guess I'll okay. ask if anybody is watching on any of the platforms if they'd like some, to submit questions. We could try to get a couple of those in. Um, you just do that in the the respective chats we have there for the um, the podcast. Let's see here. Looks like we only got one over here on Discord. Um, let me see here. So if I might take you back a little bit in time here, I'd like to, to have uh, a couple questions uh, answered about Rainbow Road Trip. Uh, that was, if I am not mistaken, the first thing you guys had done to, for yeah. the Pony o, uh, IP? Yeah. Um, how did oh, that... Oh, no, we did... A, I think we did a few Equestria shorts, but um, Equestria Girl shorts. You did? Yes, yes. No, I completely forgot about that. Um the Equestria Daily, uh, Equestria Daily, www.equestriadaily.com. Equestria Girl skits, those are uh, fabulous. We love them to death. There's tons of them. And uh, especially with the uh, uh, the series as it went on, it became more developed and it kind of got its own fan base. Um, we, we, we love to see it. Uh, for the sake of the general audience, though, I'll, I'll still probably stick to Rainbow Road Trip for the, the questions just because people, uh, people love their, uh, their cloven-hooped ponies. Um, the, uh, initially when you guys were approached for that, of course, at, at this point, were you already uh, a part of Hasbro? We were. Yeah. 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 Okay. And did they just come to you for this and, and you were, you were asked as a client to produce it? Like what was the, what was the process of you guys getting involved with that? Yeah, it was pretty much that. I mean, the script was, was, was written and was ready to go. So, um, we were asked basically just, yep, yeah, the, the storyboard is, do the kind of animation, did based the core production of it, um, and that was also our first because we we end up doing it in heart using. I think we end up using we did it in harmony. I can't remember if we used the same rigs that were in the actual the movie, uh, the G four movie. Um, but so that was that was a great experience as well. Now I wasn't involved directly with that. I was kind of supervisory, but like we had a fantastic director Jill Comerford, and uh, she had just an astounding job on uh, on us. So it was our first. Introduction really to kind of to the ponies. I was, it was great. It was, great. It was interesting about well, to work on them again for the feature film in in, in terms of to the two D opening sequence as well. So it was nice to kind of like have have two kind of attempts or two two passes at their at the animation 
in terms of uh, the 2D and, and their character design as well. Okay. I, we love the style from the movie. It was really appealing and to see that um, again and, and with a little bit more character as far as, you know, just exposure to more of that content because we got so little only through the movie. It was, it was really awesome. Um, when you approached Generation 5 as a movie, did you did you know from the beginning it was going to be CG? It, we, yes. Okay. He says, yes, we did. <laughs> we did, yes. Um, but we kind of knew we wanted to have a bit of 2D in there as well, just as a, just a callback to the Generation 4. Sure thing. Uh, who's what, what was that? Like I, you said originally, you have the ideas of of doing a, like a, a not a Gen Four reboot, but but continuing that story directly, or or maybe being a part of that in some way. But it became its own thing. Um, what was the the thought process, and what was the the you know the the philosophy behind having that opening, tying it into the previous universe, but only as like a reference to what was? Yeah, we want to. I suppose one of the, the points of that was to really kind of show Sonny's. Sonny's worldview, you know, because this is her kind of imagining how great the world was because we all were all, you know, in unity and we had magic. So it was kind of like setting up the movie. All, one, as a nice little callback just to, to, the, to the TV series and, and the see these kind of like these kind of iconic characters, but also as a way to set up, this is what Sonny wants. This is what Sonny, this is how she thinks the world should be. Um, but then have that undercut by Sprouse. You know, um, so that that was it was I think it was just and then to have that kind of jarring cut to CG, it just kind of seemed to kind of fulfill a nice little kind of a few things we wanted to, to do from the very outset, and um, kind of set set our stall out I suppose. Um, so we, you you think it's kind of like quite a younger movie, because it's kind of like the way Sonny describes it in quite childlike terms as well. Um, but then have the kind of the rug kind of pulled is something we wanted to do as well. So. It was clear this wasn't just a movie for young kids. It was, you know, we're doing something slightly different. Okay, uh, and I uh, I have another question here, but I, I I think I might do like a question and a half so we don't end on this. But um, uh, well, when the movie came out, people were were jabbing, poking fun at the whole uh, the Disney dad thing you guys did. Um, <laughs> what what was the decision behind that? Like we don't uh, we. We we lost this awesome, fantastic guy we all loved so quickly. Uh, never gonna see him again. Um, it's funny. I mean, we, there were so many iterations of, of us where actually Argyll didn't doesn't die. The Argyll's in the whole movie. Well, uh, um, in, in in one version. Um, but I was getting a bit too wasty and just kind of it was distracting from the the core characters that we we're trying to introduce. So um, yeah. I mean, we had like. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's usually something when you, when, you, when you have these kind of moments, you always have kind of like dark humor jokes where, where he goes, Night My Little Pony, and close the door, and then you hear <laughs> him falling down the stairs. But, um, um, yeah, it was kind of like, I mean, we wanted to make sure he kind of he had a presence in the movie all the way through as well, which is what we kind of spent quite a lot of time with him and, and Sonny kind of really kind of established their relationship and what he's, what he's teaching his child as well. Um, so we felt that although he we kind of he doesn't appear in the rest of the movie, you kind of you feel his presence, or at least you know, Sonny kind of refers to him in, in the photograph at the end as a callback to that as well. But he, I think it's one of those processes when you're kind of you're you're developing scripts, some things you think will work out, and you you kind of do an animatic screening, and you just realize it's something's not working. And I think I think we're just dealing with too many characters at one stage. Um, but I think I think he actually plays for the better because I think he actually has a more almost a bigger presence now um, in in there than than, than he had uh, in a in a kind of previous uh, uh, version. So that was kind of it. but it is I know it's a bit of a cliche with the the kids movies where it's always when the parents dies. But you know what? It's it's it, it's a good way to it's a good shorthand as well. Like, you know, it, I mean, it is gets you to sympathise with the character and. Um, and be empathetic towards a character, and but it depends. The character needs to still be likable as on, on their own. Certainly, and it did it. I mean, it is certainly uh, it. It makes it a little bit more compelling in its own regard. We have this uh, series of content creators, a, a whole bunch of some of the bigger ones that get together, and they do this thing called Bronies React, where they take some of the newer content and just do like little skits, little funny, goofy gags uh, um, as they watch the newer content. And I think every single one of them, like from the just right out of the gate, they're like, "This guy's really, really nice." They're gonna Disney him, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> they 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 sniff that out real quick, uh, as a lot of us did. And 
Um, he was awesome, though. I think it would have been cool to hear. I really am waiting to see the deleted scene of him falling down the stairs in the background. Uh, I'll be looking forward to that. Um, yeah, those roller skates she left on the stairs. <laughs> oh, no. Poor, poor pony. Uh, let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Because I don't, I don't think we should end on such a, a negative note there. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. So I, I've got to ask then, uh, who is uh, who is worst pony? Who's who's your least favorite pony? <laughs> um, from the movie. Um, who's my least favorite pony? There's got to be a bad apple in there somewhere. No. <laughs> um. Oh, I kind of like them all. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe I can think about well, Phyllis. I mean, obviously Phyllis, but I mean, but that's for, but I actually kind of like Phyllis. Yeah, she's well. got her own charm to it. Yeah, no joke. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. really, I mean, it's they're all kind of you know. Um, you think, honey? Pegasi forty number forty-two. I don't. I don't have any kind of like deep. Patriots who aren't any of the characters. <laughs> we'll just we'll go with Pegasus number forty two. Uh, we'll there you go. Background yeah. number two, yeah. Uh, yeah. For real though, on a on a, a closer here, I would like to ask. As I said, we have a lot of kiddos in this audience, and and if not uh, kiddos, we have a lot of people who are um, uh, very interested in animation and cartoons. So if if you would be willing, we'd love to hear about some of the things you guys are working on, some of the content to expect. If you if you'd plug anything that you'd uh, you'd like to, as well as if you are interested in sharing any of the socials or social media that you engage on, if that's something that you do, uh, we'd love to hear about that as well. Yeah, we're um, well. We just uh, last month we 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 just finished a show. It was aired on on uh, Netflix called Cat Burglar, which is kind of an interactive. Uh, Kind of Tex Avery kind of cartoon, um. So that's out, and then we're currently working on another show for Netflix, which is it's uh it's more of an adult uh, show, which is out next year as well. And then uh, in the meantime, I'm just kind of working on developing different projects as well. So not much I can speak of at the moment, but um, yeah, busy, busy, busy. You know, watch this space as usual. Awesome, and of course, uh, Chequestria is going to be coming up here, um, and anybody who might be watching who's in that area uh of course uh look forward to seeing you there i'm sure as a guest of honor um and then we have uh are you are you much of a social media guy do you do that sort of thing instagram the twitter the twatter anything like that facebook really i try try twitter from time to time but um i don't know i think i'm yeah i'm too lazy or (laughs) too incompetent um but it's usually twitter oh sorry facebook um, but yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be the biggest social um, user now. Okay, I've got to ask. Well, I'm sure. How about this? I'm sure Boulder Boulder Media has a Twitter, has a Facebook, has, yeah. uh, has oh, all of those yeah. things. Has our, all that. Yeah, we yeah. could we could go follow those and and uh, and see what you guys are up to through that as well. So yes, um, yeah. yes. Heck yeah. Well, on behalf of Equestria Daily, on behalf of uh, the Brony fandom as a whole, we really are thankful for you taking the time and for the continued work in Pony that you guys have done and maybe might even, maybe, maybe, maybe do in the future. Who knows? Uh, awesome. Thanks for having me, Alistair. It's been great. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, if you have any questions for the fandom, please do not hesitate to ask. I think you'll find very, very quickly we are uh, a lot of really kind, really passionate people, and we love everything about our culture and community and in sustaining that. So uh, we, really, we really look forward to any engagement you might have with us. Great. Look forward to us. Heck yeah. Uh, well, my name was Alistair Black with Equestria Daily. Tune in next week and we're going to have another episode of The Horse's Mouth. Uh, chances are we'll probably talk about ponies again. Uh, but until next time, guys, uh, once again, Robert Cullen, Boulder Media, great to have you. Uh, enjoy the rest of uh, your week, man. Thank you very much for your time. Cheers. Thank you. All the best. Bye, everyone. Yeah.
far as your your background and things, did you come from animation writing? What was your what was your thing? Yeah, with animation. Yeah, I studied animation in Dublin uh, for four years, and you know, I just w- worked in several different studios over uh, following college, my college years, and then um, got in two thousand. I just started Boulder, um, just more out of kind of there wasn't much work happening in Ireland at that time, so um, I decided to kind of like start my own little company and mainly focused initially just on e cards, um, when e cards were a thing. Uh, and then we just very slowly and gradually kind of grew from 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 just myself to you know four or five people for a few years, and then we got our first big break on Foster's uh, with Craig McCracken. So we went from a crew of like eight people to like forty people in the space of a month. So it was like yeah, it was a crazy experience. <laughs> Baptism of fire because I'd never worked. I worked in animation, but never as a studio on a, on a pipeline i've worked on shorts and stuff but never on a like a long format series so it was uh yeah crazy times i had to teach everyone no one knew flash at that stage because i think we were, we were probably one of the first companies to kind of do use flash for a tv series so we had to kind of teach everyone flash and um work out how you make a show in flash there was never an existing pipeline that you could reference so lots of trials and error Okay, awesome. Yeah, I heard the uh, as as some people in the industry will call it the Pony Show, um, Generation Four. They had a lot of hiccups with Flash. Like there was some issue where, uh, especially when people were on different states of of like updating, um, they would send files from one person to another, and as it went from one person to another, if there were certain um, things within that file labeled mm. in certain ways with certain characters, it would bloat the file to the extent that by the time it got to like the the final person, it would be unopenable or corrupted. Um, oh, gosh. And it caused like whole sequences to have to be done, uh, redone, literal millions of dollars um, in, in problems created. And, and they dumped it. They switched to, switched to Toon Boom, as far as I understand it. Um, okay. But yeah, that's, I, that's, that's pretty crazy. Does the studio life suit you? I could only imagine it's quite a, quite a, a lot to have to, to deal with on a day to day basis. It's, it's not too bad. I mean, it was like at its height, we had like 440 people in the studio. So that was kind of like, crazy um but we've kind of contracted a little bit now since the movie wrapped up so it's it's a bit it's a bit calmer these days and we're still a lot of people still kind of working remotely as well so it's, we have a hybrid situation a few days in the studios a few days a few a couple of days a week in the studio then the rest are at home so um yeah it seems, it seems to be working well that 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 process that approach of work okay awesome well i i am good to go i think i have quite a few different things up here if you'd like what i can do um or if you would like, rather, if we could switch over to the uh, the server here and jump in, just so if people would like to join, they can. Um, what do we need to do? Do we need to? It isn't as complicated as you would. Are you on a, a computer, a PC, or a Mac, or a? Uh, laptop, yeah. Laptop, perfect. So let me send you this again. This is going to be the link to the server. You're going to see a big old button there at the bottom that says join, I believe. Okay, yeah, yeah, got it, um, yeah. And then when you do so, uh, you'll be popped in to the server. On the left-hand side, underneath Equestria Daily, you'll see these tons of different channels, like movie night, general rules, just all kinds of different subjects. Um, let me see here. If you scroll down just a bit, there well, is... Join now, will I join now? Do what? I'm sorry? Will I join now? Will yeah, I... on, the, on the server thing I sent, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, cool. And then, oh yes, yeah, you'll see all kinds of quite, quite the, uh, quite the server we got here. Um, on that left-hand bar there, you have a, a top-down of just of different subjects. Um, it's on the very left-hand side. It should be a scrollable little uh, um, section. Um, we're just looking for the events chat, and I'll send you a picture here of what that looks like. I think I have a picture saved from last night that might help. There it is. Yeah, on that left-hand side there, you'll want to navigate to the one that says the horse's mouth. And I'm going to give you permissions really quick. That way you can speak in it. We have it locked to where, of course, only the the guests and I can speak to save us from a nightmare if a bunch of people start jumping in. Um... That was... Right.
It looks like you're in another voice channel. Are you sure you want to switch? Or yes. Yep. Perfect. 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 Can you still hear me? Okay. Still there? Yep. Here. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. Cool. Oh, let me see here. Da, da, da. That's good. So yeah, Discord uh, server. Very, very fancy little thing we have going on here. Not quite as cool as Zoom from what I understand, but uh, <laughs> the kids sure love it. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick Q&A, or Q&A, quick uh, uh, quality check to make sure all, all the everythings are working as they should.